Batman The Audio Adventures. No joy in Gothamville tonight at the top of the ninth. One on, four one lead for the Bogstormers trying to put this one away. Gotham Gaslamp star SWAT Fleischhacker steps in, hitless today with his 57 game hitting streak perilously on the line. SWAT has not looked good since the Lamps have been on the road, Woo. Not good at all. This is not the way SWAT wanted to tee up his triumphant return to Gotham this weekend. You know, Stiv, the pressure seems to be getting to him as he nears the Winter League hit record. Pressure is the word, no doubt more than a few bets arriving on SWAT and his magic bat tonight. You got that right. Heck, you're down for 10 large, aren't you, Stiv? You know you're not supposed to say that on the air, Luke. Come on, man. Loretta is going to divorce me. She is serious this time. <laughs> Miss Yvonne Plunkett and her terrific tuba. How about a round of applause for another beautiful and talented contestant? But there can only be one Miss Gotham City. She's the acme, she's the apex, free from physical defects. She's our Miss Gotham City. Ain't it a pity most girls aren't as pretty as Miss Gotham City. That's all 28 of our lovely hopefuls, and now the judges will... What's that? One more contestant. Hey, 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 hey one side girl. Hey, I've got a real woman you. coming through. What's up? Uh, who are you supposed to be? Oh, I'm Custodial Services. Mac here to mop the floor with these leggy ding-dongs. You call that talent, girlies? Uh, thought at least one of you would be doing a soft shoe. Well, yeah, I don't know. Fastballing hamsters into a wood chipper, but no doctor. Not a lot of competition here tonight. This ought to be a cinch. Uh, and what's with the clown costume, anyway? Hey, good question. Buy a ticket to the circus and find out, Mac. Security? Could someone... Sing the song! Uh, sh she's the tops. She's the summit. She's just perfect at gummit. She's Miss Gotham City. Ah, oh, please take it easy. Yeah, okay, toothpaste. Next time you try to carry a tune, bring a bucket. Now then, sorry, Gotham City, but this is a dedicated performance for an audience of one. You know who you are, my sweet pudding. Or maybe you don't. Huh? That's violent psychopathy for you, right? So, if you need a refresher course, you're tall, chemically bleached, and handsome adjacent, grading on a curve. You're the clown prince of crime, of course, and you don't know it yet, but I'm your number one second banana. I just gotta ask you to be patient a little longer, Puddin'. I need everything to be perfect, and that means I wait till the magic bat comes back to town. Trust me, it's gonna be socko. We're gonna turn a dog into sausages the whole night. And anyhow, what's your rush, Buster? And hey, what are you watching this trash for anyhow? Oh, come on, you don't see anything you like in this flock of turkeys, do ya? Huh? <gasps> what the heck are you ogling other dames for? I'll show you a real woman who knows how to commit to a bit. Okay, Rosso, Nero, wheel that stuff out here. Here, boss? Yeah, 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 that's good. Make sure the camera can see. Oh, and give Nero a sack of potatoes, too. And now, without further ado, I like to show this town and my pudding a real class talent. Please enjoy as I play Georg Friedrich Handel's water music on the musical wine glasses, while my two associates pelt me moistless like with a hail of raw Idaho taters. Okay, let them rip, boys. Oh! to look into an industrial grade restraining order, or I just laid eyes on the gal of my dreams. <laughs> Gotham, the ball and chain on a drowning fugitive. Join us now for another tale of life and death in Gotham City, March 6th. A series of masterful manipulations has seen malevolent mafioso Oswald Cobblepot installed as Oversight Commissioner of the Gotham City PD. 
But the penguin has learned seizing a wriggling fish is not the same as swallowing it. Having failed thus far to make good on his promise to rid the city of the Joker, Commissioner Cobblepot feels mounting pressure from cops and citizens alike to deliver. Meanwhile, the longer Catwoman eludes the price on her head, the larger the bounty grows, and the shorter her list of options. Silhouetted upon this lurid backdrop, the dynamic duo makes a daring effort to save a man from his mind. The sumptuous guest suites at the Iceberg Lounge are seldom to be found with a vacancy. Any night of the week sees the house at capacity, with sharps on benders, twists having trysts, and a preposterous array of assumed names filling the guest registry. But one room is reserved for a single very special resident. Or is that a famous pair? Room service, Mr. Dent. Dr. Crane says it's time for your evening meds. Room 222 on the second floor is the present residency of Harvey Two-Face Dent. Having recently been tucked into bed with another megadose of joy cure, the fractured felon is now sleeping peacefully. But little does he know he's put in for an early checkout. An impossibly sleek black watercraft bobs gracefully in the harbor outside the floating iceberg lounge. And in the cockpit, Robin the Boy Wonder lowers a pair of binoculars with grim satisfaction. Robin and Batman, perimeter security didn't see a thing. You got in clean. I'm not in yet. Harvey has a dedicated security detail. Dr. Crane has been randomly glitching their surveillance all night, so the stage is set for me to make my move. Copy that. I have the boat in position to pick up the package. Standing by in submersible mode. Commissioner Gordon is going to light the bat signal momentarily. When Crane sees it, he'll disable the cameras one last time. Then I move in. What if Two-Face gives you trouble? According to Crane, the joy cure has left him almost docile, but he's paralyzed with indecision without his coin. Yeesh. He will comply with almost any command rather than be forced to make the decision to resist. That will make him easy to move, but I shudder to think what it means for his rehabilitation. First order of business is a full medical detox from Joy Cure. Do you have to? I kind of like the sound of this Two-Face. I've been doing research on Joy Cure. It's imperative we get him weaned off of it before he develops a dependency. Going radio silent. Monitor their communications and be ready to pick up Harvey for exfiltration. Batman out. Good luck, Batman. I hope Harvey Dent appreciates what you do for him. Above the city, across the water, the bat signal illuminates on cue, and the boy wonder tunes his receiver frequency. <laughs> Mr. Gemini is secure under lockdown. Repeat, Mr. Gemini is in his twin bed, over. Team leader, this is surveillance. Go ahead. I got cameras out down here again. It's been happening all night. Copy that. All positions check in. This is Sardine. All clear in the hallway. Fluke here. All clear in room 222. It's Flounder. All secure on the balcony. Nothing going on out here. Bad signal went up a minute ago. Yeah, oh. Somebody's gonna have a rough night. <laughs> yep, sucks to be them. And they don't know it's coming. You never think the signal's for you. It's the odds. You know, 900 crimes a night in this town. What are the odds on the egg that gets caught? Hey, uh, I heard something. I'm gonna go check it out real quick. Even ducks making noise. Might have to call maintenance. Copy that, Sardine. Hey, Fluke, you think they really call him with that thing? What, the bat signal? Oh, no way. That's not what it's for. Don't, don't kid yourself. Well, what's it for, then? Oh, it's a transmitter for sub trans nebula Omega Race. You said Omega Rays? Yeah, that's what it is. It shoots out Omega Rays along a transnebular vortex vector. They travel on an astral photonic subfrequency, so we're probably getting blipped right now. What the frig are Omega Rays? What are you stupid? Reverse engineered alien technology from Wayne Enterprises in partnership with GCPD. Mind control also makes you sterile. That's why these days I always keep my privates wrapped in tinfoil. Oh, fluke. And, you know, better safe than sorry. You know, fluke, you ain't right ever since Penguin put you in the fish tank for the weekend. Hey, I had a lot of time to think when I was in there. A lot of things make sense to me now. Like, do you think Batman just invents those crazy gizmos he's got? And the car? No way. Recovered alien tech from planet Zervanar, supplied to him by Black Budget Projects at Wayne Industries. <laughs> yeah, Sardine, his cousin works at Wayne. Tell him, Sardo. Sardine, you check out that noise? <laughs> I didn't come. Did he say? Already on it. Clear an evac route. Do we have? Alert all positions. I got cameras back and confirm we have been infiltrated by the Batman. You can't be serious. Louder, he's coming your way. Oh, no. He's coming around He's the... in the hallway. My God, he's fast. He's... We have another 
Agent Dow. Room 222. Be advised, the Batman is moving on your position. Well, what do I do? He's passing room 200. 208. Oh, God. Listen to me, Fluke. This is team leader. Hold position in room 222 and prepare for solo engagement with... What, what is that? Are you laughing? You try. 218. Get a hold of yourself. You have a job to do. What is so damn funny? No, it's just... Uh... You never think the signal's there for you. Harvey Dent is feeling a peace that is the perfect inverse of the coming fury of Oswald Cobblepot. Two sides of a plug nickel called Life and Death in Gotham City. Who knows what evil dwells in the heart of the dark of the city? One lone defender of the night, Batmite! Hey, boys and girls, you've seen him at the cinema. You've seen him in the funny papers. Now Batmite needs your help in his crime-busting crusade. Heed the call. He wants you to join the Mite Brigade. I'm serious. Tell your parents to subscribe to home delivery of the Gotham Gazette, and we'll send you your official Batmite Junior Crime Fighting Kit. You'll get everything you need for an afternoon of wholesome crime-busting fun. A rope, a mask, a black bodysuit, a lockpick, a pair of custom-made handcuffs, a glass cutter, and a sack of smoke bombs. What could go wrong? Sounds like the first mystery for you to solve as a member of the Might Brigade. He's out on the prowl in his cape and his cow. So you evil do as best beware. Gotham, a windmill spinning backwards on a still night. Join us now for another tale of life and death in Gotham City. Two-Face floats peacefully in the featureless void of his deep unconscious. Don't move, Harvey. Stop, man. Sleep now, Harvey. I'm getting you out of here. The last thing he remembers is the hiss of the aerosol and the acrid smell of potent hypnotic gas. But as his consciousness slowly rises to the surface, the sound that beckons him is the voice of a friend? Harvey. Two-Face slowly opens one eye. He lays in a lavish four-poster bed. At his side, tending to him like a faithful valet, is Bruce Wayne. Well, it's a cinch you ain't Batman. Easy. Batman brought you here to stay with me for a little while. <sighs> Last thing I remember, and now I'm... Hey, I know this place. Slowly, Harvey's other eye flutters open. Bruce? Welcome back, Harvey. Been a while since you came by the house. Bruce, what... What's happening here? You're going through a tough time. I thought you could stay here for a while. That is, if your partner won't cause me any trouble. Who? Me? Yes, you. <laughs> what did I do? I have concerns about you. You also got a liquor cabinet, Fault Leroy? Of course. Then what do I gotta be sore about? Bruce, Bruce, you don't understand. I I have a lot of work left to do for the Penguin. You don't work for him anymore. He's got big plans, Bruce. What we've done for him, it, it will all collapse without us, Bruce. Do you know what the Penguin will do when he starts to lose it all? Please lie back down, Harvey. You can tell me later. Right now, what I need is... Wait, wait. Harvey's eye lights up on a large leather-bound book sitting next to a steaming cup of tea on his bedside table. This book, Don Quixote. I thought you might like something to read. One man. Both a hero and a fool. You remember it. The press, they called Harvey Dent D.A. Don Q, didn't they? Deluded. Certain to fail in a decrepit crusade to rid Gotham of its monsters. And they called me your Sancho Panza. I'm still willing to fight your windmills with you, Harvey. Harvey Dent looks into the eyes of his erstwhile friend. The caring and compassionate and strangely familiar eyes. Say! A book this old and ugly must cost a pretty penny. Careful, please. This is a Rothschild House edition. Very few survived the Great London Fire. Wait, we gave you this book. Check the inscription. To Bruce, faithful squire. No, we didn't give you this book. I gave you this book. Harvey, all I need from you is some legality to your stay here to protect us both from Oswald Cobblepot. What? Oh, yeah, uh, of course. <clears throat> All right, call this number. You know Judge Hellman? He's cheated me in a few rounds of golf. Tell him you're filing an emergency petition for guardianship under subsection D of the Volstead Code with expedited process pursuant to a physician's examination. Brilliant. Excuse me, sir. Hey, 
It's Alfred. He's a moat that takes the drink orders. A pleasure to have your company once again, sir. Would you excuse me a moment, Harvey? There's a car coming up the front drive, Master Bruce. Dr. Crane. He's here for his payment. Did the film canisters arrive from the Wayne Media Archives? They did. And they're on the receiving table in the Grand Foyer. Shall I invite the doctor into the study? No, stay with Harvey. As soon as I've dealt with Crane, I'll work up the detox protocol. Harvey will start to withdraw imminently. We can't let that happen. Very good, sir. And let me know when Robin comes back in from patrol. In a moment, Bruce Wayne is downstairs, opening the vast front door of his father's home to greet the late arrival. Good evening, Doctor. Mr. Wayne, thank you for receiving me at this hour. I confess I could scarcely wait to get my goodies. Your patient is resting comfortably, Doctor. Thank you for your concern. Ah, uh, yes, uh, splendid. Are those the film canisters over there? That's it. The complete and uncut master print of Basil Carlo's infamous final film. There was only ever one private screening. Fifteen studio executives thought they had what it took to face the second scan. The toughest of them made it through the opening credits. But before the first scene was finished, he had put his own eyes out like everyone else. They say the worst part of finding that screening room full of eyeless men is what blissful relief they seem to be enjoying staring at the ceiling with empty sockets as the tail end of the film reel flaps in the empty projector. A grotesque story. And an excellent reason for why I'm adjusting the terms of our deal. Adjusting? I'm not letting you take the film off the premises. You can examine it here freely in my screening room, but at no point does the film ever leave my supervision. As you've just said, it's dangerous. Hardly honorable. And yet it's the right thing to do. The film must remain here at Wayne Manor, you say? Those are the only terms I'll accept. What luck. I was already planning on staying a while, so your terms are perfectly acceptable. I beg your pardon? Staying? In the capacity of your personal physician. You've got a long recovery ahead of you. Recovery? I don't need medical attention, doctor. Well, not yet. What? In an instant, Bruce Wayne finds himself choking on a roiling plume of orange gas that billows from the coat sleeve of the suddenly aggressive alienist. What? No. When the gas begins to clear, a face swims out of the acrid fog. A hideous face, wrapped in rotten patchwork burlap. Scarecrow. Oh, you poor little orphan boy. What exquisite fears you must have in the pit of your pampered soul. I confess, after you left my office, I couldn't get my mind off the thought of little Bruce standing in an alley behind the movie theater, racked by a fear that to this very day gnaws you raw from the inside. Dear father, dear mother. I'll take that necklace you're wearing, lady. You're back there right now, aren't you? <coughs> oh, yes, yes, that's, that's a potent batch there. Very specially formulated. Eventually, I'm going to use it on the Batman, but I'm very excited about this little test run. <laughs> now then, to the dining room. Get the fine china out. Scarecrow's faithful motorcycle gang, Dim Bones, ride a dozen strong into the grand foyer of Wayne Manor. I am going to eat your fears, little orphan boy. Bruce Wayne now knows the secret identity of the Scarecrow but he is brought low by the discovery. As Wayne Manor is overrun by the vile Scarecrow gang, the evening forecast is horror with a chance of madness. And what of Alfred and Two-Face? Stay tuned for the answers in an imminent tale of life and death in Gotham City. From the distant reaches of space to the phantom planet, Zurinar. These three contestants will compete for cash and fabulous prizes on... First pitch from Deskin, fastball, strike one. Swat Fleischacker has struck out three times today, and he fouled out to Kalui last time. Sorry to say the magic in that bat might have run out. That's bad news if you're betting on Swat keeping his hidden streak alive. And we know you are, despite your many broken promises to your family. Why, Lou? Just why? Deskin gets the sign, and... What's this? Swat shows butt. And now Beltran charges down the line. Look out! Holy mercy! Fleischacker fakes the butt and swings away. Beltran oh. goes down as the ball caroms off his kneecap. I can't tell a lie, Lou. That's gonna hurt. That is very 
clever, but the man is gruesomely injured. Runner advances, Fleischacker is safe, and the streak is at 58. Swat's magic bat comes through with an old school fake out, and finally the gas lamps show some... Life and death in Gotham City. Epilogue. Gas Lamps faithful, breathing a sigh of relief tonight after rookie Toots Tully crushed a desk and meatball high off the right field foul pole for a game-winning home run to secure another unlikely rally. Final score, Gas Lamps win 5-4. And if it's meatballs that you like, head on down to the new Mama Dagmar's Diner where every... Yes, yes, Maxie, I saw the game, yes. Yes, it was a close one. Don't get your token or not. They won, didn't they? Whatever you bet on the lamps tonight... Let it ride. Double it if you can. SWAT Flyshacker's hot streak will hold out. You can count on it. How do I know? <laughs> How does anyone know anything in this town? Because the fix is in on the next gas lamps game. <laughs> As I say, bet with confidence. Bet the farm, even, old boy. Does Mount Olympus have farms? I don't even know. At any rate, the worst odds in the city will still pay out a fortune. You have my word. Oh, Maxie, you make rigging a baseball game sound difficult. Nothing in Gotham City is beyond my influence right now. This is a trifling demonstration of my reach. Are you doubting me, Maxie? You heard what? Well, don't be ridiculous. Instability? In my organization? <laughs> How come now? This isn't Santa Prisca. This is Gotham City. Things couldn't be better. <laughs> well, things couldn't be worse, Mr. DeCondor. My business partner and legal counsel is abducted. My crooked cops can't kill a single psychopathic clown. My empire is besieged by incompetence. All of my carefully laid plans are crumbling. And now I have to figure out how to rig a bloody baseball game to keep the natives from getting restless? How the flying fish am I supposed to do that? Pretty providence, where did I do the insult? Cool down, Oswald. You want to be the first penguin to ever die of heat stroke? Catwoman? How do you keep getting in here? I am so tired of you hospitalizing my employees. Relax. I'm the answer to your sweaty little prayers. I heard you need to catch a clown. You give me protection from this price on my head, I'll get you your clown. Life and death in Gotham City. To be continued. Batman The Audio Adventures. Written and directed by Dennis McNicholas. Batman, created by Bob Kane with Bill Finger, based on characters from DC, with performances by Jeffrey Wright, Aristotle Atari, Ike Barinholtz, Rosario Dawson, Steve Higgins, Toby Huss, Gillian Jacobs, John Leguizamo, Dennis McNicholas, Tim Meadows, Seth Myers, Bobby Moynihan, Chris Parnell, Katie Rich, Ben Rogers, Paul Shear. Pete Schultz, Brooke Shields, Brent Spiner, Keenan Thompson, Alan Tudyk, Bradley Whitford, Melissa Villasenor, Eli Brueggemann, Doug Bossy, Ronjani Brow, Chris Gibney, Julie Larson, Erica Phillips, Rosie Phillips, Tony Phillips, Zoe Phillips, Deirdre Quinn, Robbie Wyckoff, Executive Producers John Berg, Angela Petrella, Produced by Dennis McNicholas. Executives in charge of production, Shalene Desai, Peter Girardi. Producer, Tyler Dorson. Production services by Cast Media. Producer, Colin Thompson. Coordinating producer, DJ Lubell. Music by Doug Bossy. Sound recording, design, and mixing by Big Yellow Duck. Sound design, mixing, dialogue editing, and re-recording mixing by Chris Gibney. Dialogue editing and additional post-production by Julie Larson. Original songs by Doug Bossy and Tony Phillips. The characters and events depicted in this podcast are fictional. Any similarity to any actual person, living or dead, or to any actual events, firms, places, and institutions or other entities is coincidental and unintentional. This podcast is protected under the laws of the United States and other countries, and its unauthorized duplication, distribution, or exhibition may result in civil liability and criminal prosecution. 
Country of First Publication, United States of America. Batman, The Audio Adventures. Copyright 2022, Warner Brothers Entertainment Incorporated. Batman and all related characters and elements are trademark and copyright DC. All rights reserved.